Hey guys, welcome to another day. Got a bit of a loud one. Apparently everybody decided to mow the lawn all at once. But neighbors are going to do what neighbors are going to do. To update on this week, we got our motor in yesterday. Everything's bolted up and looks wonderful today. Except for I need to tighten my damn motor mounts down. I didn't do that last night. Simple things. I was watching video and editing and I was like, huh. Never did tighten them things down, did I? I mean, that's not good. So we'll have to get them tightened down. And the bolts on the inside of the L brackets now. We're going to finally put the vinyl turn on those. That's just stupid things. We're probably going to work on our water pickup also. Get it straightened out. Maybe the bottom hoses. I kind of get the impression I'm going to have to work my way up. It's the way I always seem to do it. I don't want the exhaust manifolds in the way while I'm trying to do wiring for the starter. That way I can get it all nice and neat. I can get my hoses all put in. I can get my bypass all hooked up, everything else. And then slap the manifold on and be done with it. And then work on the rest of the top half of the motor. But at the moment I'm still a little perplexed what to do. As I said, I've got this stuff here, which that's going to start here, I guess. And that's a good place to start as any. Got some hose down here. I got a whole bunch of exhaust parts over here. Got a whole bunch of electric stuff, fire extinguisher, it needs to get installed yet. Um, you know, everything I took off the motor, plus some more MSD system box, you know, a bunch of electrics basically. Um, yeah, I just got piles and I have no, no, no direction at the moment. It's just one of these days, like I said. It's a happy day though. I mean, like I said, the motor, I looked around today, the motor hoist is over here. And there's no motor in the garage. That motor sat underneath it air for a couple of years. So I have it gone and that outdrive lined up to go out there also. It's a good day. It's a real good day. I just got to find uh, <laughs> some motivation and uh, some direction. This is weird. I just jumped up on the transom shield here and uh, the boat bounces. It's been so bow heavy because there's been nothing back here since I got it that uh, I have never felt that before in this boat. And this one over here, I step on the transom and it'll actually flip up in the air. Be careful, it won't roll right off the trailer itself. We went ahead and got our nuts tightened on both sides. We got our lag bolts. Just an eh, eighth of a turn, maybe, I think, was left. Just probably from sitting in there. And we went ahead and got our water pickup all fixed up. We also, while we're at it, changed out this fitting here to a smaller one because the hose would not fit. But that's just it was a mistake that I fixed with stuff in the drawer. Got our water hose out here softening up. The sun is blistering. I haven't said that this year. I know that much. And, uh... We're going to use it to our advantage a little bit besides getting a sunburn because I still got white skin from the winter time. It's been so crappy out here. Also have our water lines out. We've got a short one there. And then of course the long one will go over to the pickup. Short one's going to come into this intersection. And that's where the feed from this comes in at. It'll come in right before the water pump. You won't even have to worry about turning the shut off, anything like that. Mainly the shutoff is there because if the boat is inspected, they'll want a shutoff there. Anything through hull, you're supposed to have a shutoff on. I've had boats before. I had a 19-foot Monza, and they literally put the pickup underneath the oil pan. Strangest place in the world, but I got uh, some guy did an inspection before he bought it, and that was the first thing they hit. It was like no shutoff for the for the for the water pickup and I was like well, what am I supposed to do <laughs> by the time I can put a shut off in it it's already going to be out in front of the motor which you know ain't nothing I'm going to be able to do at that point I didn't like the design but they had a well built into the bottom and everything it was just it was made that way and I couldn't do anything differently so I just put it back the way it was but 
No, I was not a fan because I always thought myself too. It's like, you know, if this busts open, this could be bad news. Uh, the new owners had it for years. I've never got a call, so I don't think it's uh, ever fallen apart. But we're milling forward now at this point. We started picking up things to work on. As I said, we're letting that heat up. I'm going to let it get nice and warm there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick these pieces together and then we're going to try to snake it in the boat. Yeah, someone new sneaking in. Don't really care about me or the lawnmower. Oh, something spooked them. Off they go. But, and off I go. Okay, I got the water pump hooked up. Got our little bypass right there. It comes out right underneath the motor mount, so you're not gonna see that. But that's where this green hose goes to, which goes up to the transom to that inlet. I'm not gonna cut it off or install it yet because I need to get all the wiring and everything else that comes down here, and then I'll bundle it all. And that's when I'll just plug it into the end when it comes out just right. Everything over here for our water pickup is installed, double clamped, and everything's in the right position all super tight You're not going to be able to just grab it by chance and move it around or anything like that uh, i'm hot i'm real hot but besides that it's taking a while because everything is brand new meaning there never was a hole there there never was lines here there never was this there never was that so yeah there's no pattern at all to follow there's nothing i mean it's just here is new motor, sitting on new motor mounts. Here is water pump. You drilled a hole in there, and I gotta tell you real quick, uh, when I drilled that hole, it was here, it was here, it was here, it was here, it was here. And at one point I just said, just pull the trigger. Just pull the trigger, and I'm telling you, it came out next to a bunk like this close. I mean, it was so close to a bunk. And I did measurements, and it just, you know, you can only measure so much, and it still was off a little bit. But that's what's taking so long, besides it being miserably hot. And now that I have that done, I have to uh, take this abundancy of tools that we have gathered around for hoses of all things and get rid of those. I don't need a heat gun anymore. I don't need a lot of these pipe wrenches and stuff like this. So we're going to have to empty them all into the garage and then we're going to have to regroup and come out here for another thing. That's the way, I mean, like if I move into the electrics next, I don't need any of this stuff. I need wire cutters and, you know, uh, zip ties and ends and, and a crimper and shrink tube and yeah see so that goes on all by itself and, and none of it's this so i'm going to clean up and then we'll see what we can get into next this anymore last of my 716 inch fuel line I've gone through hundreds of feet of it I don't want to buy anymore I mean it's just when I have to I ended up buying 25 foot long rolls because nobody around here carries it besides in like three foot sections and that's pretty much useless unless you're like finagle on a fuel line on a car or something like that but when you're running huge runs new no, i mean this is longer than three foot 
But like I said, I got my fuel pump all hooked back up. I changed some fittings in it. That one kind of came out a little wonky straight towards the thing here. So I uh, got rid of all that. Put in another one of these 45 degree fittings. I'm glad I ordered two of them. And that gave it a nice angle towards this way. And then I just used the angle of the actual hose itself um, as it came off the roll just to make this nice little arc and it worked out perfectly. So our fuel system is all hooked up besides the carburetor, which that's something that will come later on. And uh, as I said, this line's all ready to go. It just needs to be piped in down there. Uh, we just want to make sure we get it strapped up. And speaking of that, we still are having a small issue with our alternator over here. It is awful tight. Now, when these guys are pulled back up here like that, it gets even tighter. But mainly it's because of these lines here are all kind of like just falling over. So I'm going to have to do some sort of either rearranging these lines or just moving them entirely. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do at the moment, but that's tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be electric because it's a kind of a mess at the moment. It's all over the place and it really kind of dictates everything where like lines are going to follow i mean i have to have lines that come over here and get to the starter and that water line will actually follow that along this side here that's what i'm waiting on there so electric kind of like moves things along a lot because then everything else as i said once the starter's wired up i'm done with the bottom half i can put the manifolds on i can start going from there putting the top half of the motor together distributor carburetor all the water lines you know it just a lot of things get done once the wiring has been completed but it's its own animal because it's going to have to start from right here and i'm going to have to know where everything goes from that point because once i break that line i'm going to have to start using shrink wrap and things like that and wire loom if i'm using those then i have to be like five steps ahead at all times because it'll branch off and if you don't have your stuff already up there ready to go you know because it's the sleeve you can't cut the sleeve it's got to be on before everything branches off you're not getting it on so that's something we'll do entirely different as i said it's a whole set of different tools whole set of different attitude whole set of everything and that's something that definitely needs to be done and once that's taken care of then we'll just roll right through everything else because as i said a lot of it's just kind of setting things in place bolting them up yep that's done yep that's done then it's going to get a little tricky again when it comes to the exhaust manifolds and where they come out at and how they come out and just it may be a little tricky <laughs> but again i got to clean up this mess and then i'm going to call it a night i know it doesn't seem like we're getting much done but again you got to keep in mind none of it's been here before that fuel line had no idea that it was going to connect to that fuel filter just a matter of an hour ago and it was in the back of my head somehow it had to just to be on the safe side so it doesn't flop out or anything like that or somebody happens to step down there and step on it i'll put a hanger there again that's part of the whole electrics when the electrics everything else is in all the hangers will be able to be done then we can bury our access by putting the manifolds on and all that'll be gone <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow Welcome to another day of race boat life. Yes, it's still a race boat. <laughs> it's still there. Well, we're back here on the almond project. And today, under the scorching sun of four o'clock in the afternoon, really hoping it kind of starts weighing off a little bit here. I am going to attempt to start getting the wiring in its general locations because I've got this MSD box here that I got to mount somewhere on this transom. It can be either a side, doesn't really matter. Mine on my 19 here is on this side. I take it it's just more convenient because of the water port that comes in to flush the motor. It has to find a home and the real part that's really perplexing me here is what to do about this mess over here. Because, I mean, yes, I do have this fan belt and it went on and it should be the one that actually does it for the rest of its life 
and I don't mean that one fan belt but that number because it's got three or four different numbers on it if you can't cross reference that and you go for a longer one you're probably going to end up hitting the fuel fill down here the hose that goes to the gas tank and I'm not really sure if I'm going to leave all this battery cabling there's a hanger that's missing here that's why it's drooping but that's also another option too is to get it to droop a little more in which case it would be lower once it goes past the pivot point it wouldn't matter if it came out anymore or not and then there's always the option of giving the karate kick and just flattening this two inch hose out just a little bit right there I mean, if you had to do what you had to do I mean, these 454s are a tight squeeze that's why my alternator ended up over here but that's trust me it was a conglomerate of builds over many years and it was a uh, it was just a lot of different pieces a lot of different parts and a lot of homemade stuff that i made it work properly in this case here we have you know factory so we're gonna have to make this factory work even though it's modified factory it's still factory so but that's the plan i really don't know how to film figuring out wiring so we'll just see how this works out today It sure don't look like much but to me it's miles it's hard to explain I took the battery cables out of this side completely tried to slim this whole package down it's actually sticking off a little bit off you can see down between there but there's about a fingers width between the two already as I said if you got in a pinch you could just kind of give this thing a nice flat kick and it would flat oval it out a little bit it's the same diameter no matter whether it's oval or round but I'd prefer to leave it round, so we're just going to leave it like that for now, and it's fine. Um, that fan belt can come off and hit that thing a thousand times. It's a wire cord for gas tanks. I mean, this thing's made with armor shield and all that stuff, so it's fine. I don't think a fan belt would do any damage to it, to be honest. And uh, we went ahead and got our MSD box in. A lot of positioning goes off of it. You know, it has, I don't know, probably eight wires that come off of it and they all have to go in different directions so it had to be installed and just to find out where everything was going to end up and i've i gotta say and it's just one of these things where i know this is permanent and it's not hidden and it may need maintenance later on i mean i may have to take this motor out just because you know who knows life goes on i really don't want to make it any more complicated than i have to so I'm really trying to think well ahead into the future, you know, like if you have to pull this motor, I'm really trying to accomplish where you only have to take the ground off of there and pull the wires off the starter and of course all your senders and the whole thing should just flop right out of the way. I don't want anything attached to the motor or attached, you know, where you have to like disassemble, you know, to get it off. It should just pretty much 
because with these air gap intakes you can run all the wires right underneath of them so i mean that's that's first off everything's right intact there and then on top of that as i said you know it's just if you have one bolt back here and a starter over here it makes life a lot easier than trying to unloom and unwire and to have things over here that run across the bell housing to that side because everything on my my 19 is on that side it's just the way it worked out all the grounds and stuff are going to be on this side because the battery cables come down this side just the way it worked out but it looks like we got some weather moving in and it's already 7 30 going on eight o'clock so i'm going to call it a day as i said everything looks slow i mean i've had this water hose in and out 10 times it was gone behind this it's gone in front of that it's gone behind the hydraulic lines it's gone in front of the hydraulic lines i've pulled it up this way oh, i gotta worry about exhaust you know still gotta have that exhaust pull place so yeah it's a uh, i'm just fed up with it and tired <laughs> and i'm glad it's already almost eight o'clock because i really don't want to continue on but we'll be fresh again tomorrow and uh we'll see you then And welcome to another day of electrics. Yeah, we're busy, but it seems like we're going nowhere. Um, it's a challenge. Always is, the first time around. As I said, you got to get everything from this point here has to be done completely and ready to accept anything like these looms or anything else before you can actually move on to anywhere else. And in reality, you probably should be already be three or four steps ahead of that point. Um, I've got all my MSD box wiring and everything else from the, the main harness coming into this point right here. Finally got them semi tied together. Uh, two of my wires make a U-turn basically and go back up into the MSD box. So, you know, it was a little tricky getting the shrink tube on that stuff. And then it attached and have enough shrink tube exactly where you needed to be because after those the loops were put on you weren't getting anything over top of the loop so yeah it's a bit of a challenge as i said and it's slow as hell it just is i mean it, it, because you don't want to start tearing things apart again just to get something put back together that you forgot and as you can see we've got basically three groups of wiring one heads to the starter this heads up towards the motor and then we have grounds down here so um, yeah it's a bit of a challenge but we finally got to that grouping there so now it's time to start using our own light wiring looms and break them off and go in all different directions but like I said this is terrible film <laughs> but we'll see what we can do Well, here we are a number of hours later. It's a little cooler and a little darker. And it's about to get real dark, so I had to call it quits. Still got a lot of stuff to put away, clean up over here. And I got to the point where I need to get some hangers installed on this side. You know, you can't just, you know, it's generally put in all that direction already. It just needs to be uh, finalized. And you can't really finalize any cuts until you actually have the hangers in place. So, with that, no hangers. I thought they're in there, but I don't have the screws out and I need washers. And then I'll need my angle drill. And by the time I started pulling all this out, I was like, yeah, it's already after 8 o'clock. It's not going to happen. But we did get an insane amount done. And it doesn't look it. And that's probably a good thing. Uh, all of this back here is all put together. There's it goes to a ground right there, which 
hasn't been put on yet. These are my wires for the coil. This one's for the distributor, the magnetic pickup. This one runs underneath the intake, like I said. It comes up here for the choke, in which case I haven't cut that one off yet either. Water pump, or the water temp is on. It's just sitting on it. Make sure it's the right length. It's just good enough to sit on. Alternator wires are all back here. Even got a little boot out. So a little boot will go over top of it. I got that on an inspection one time too. No boot. Took me like three minutes, but I saw it on a report. I was just, uh, oops. And uh, as I said, the grounds will go right there. I just need to get a spacer and a longer bolt. So I have about 80% of the ends on. As I said, I got kind of stopped over here at the starter. One of the things I also tried to do is to keep the MSD box uh, separatable. Um, a lot of the lines that come off of it end up being like this one here, this one here. That's pretty much a straight run all the way through. Of course, there's a couple wires that would have to be hardwired, so um, there would be a snip snip here and there, but the majority of it can actually just unzip tie and take it off if it uh, decides to I need to go back to the factory let's just put it that way but our fingers are crossed we've had really good luck with these 6Ts and uh, hopefully this one will be just as good as the last one we have which at the moment knock on fiberglass is doing a wonderful job in that little 19 right there so that's about where we're at as I said it's just so nothing really to film it's not like oh look at that the exhaust is on or oh look at that i put a seat in it's just wires 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 but as i said you got to do this and you got to be five steps ahead or you're taking things back apart trying to get five steps back um but as i said we're well past all the hard stuff we only have the one leg left to do over here at the starter and uh then i have to make a couple battery cable ends and Pretty much the electrics are done besides hooking them up of course i gotta make sure i remember to hook them all up that would be pretty stupid but we're gonna have to do that tomorrow because as i said the first thing i gotta do is put hangers in and that's gonna take up some time and some other tools that are not out here at the moment so we'll see you all tomorrow And welcome to another day as you saw we are getting prepared to go back in and do some more electric work got into our uh, hangers here and uh, have a bunch of them that are a little bit too big of course you know having one too big isn't the end of the world having one too small can be a real problem like these guys here I mean they're about as big as one battery cable maybe maybe uh, they have their uses but not really much at the moment for us so I took a couple of these uh, longer ones split them down rounded some corners and made littler ones that's where my time goes I mean that was a good 20 minutes of uh, fooling around with that and of course you have to uncover the boat you have to get all the tools out to the boat I have to get ready to go in the boat and hopefully stay in it without having to get back out of it 37 times for other things that you forgot so the time adds up and then of course at some point today i'll probably have to take everything back out of the boat and put it all back away that time eats up fast i'm telling you i mean i, I know i'm just kind of like rambling on here about it but most folks just don't take it into account i mean they're like oh well that motor should take you x amount of time to put in well yeah well if everything was perfect and all the holes were there and everything was ready um and all my tools just magically appeared in the boat at the time that needed them and then they disappeared back out of the boat when they were not needed <laughs> that kind of thing it adds up it adds up to a ton of time like now i get to come over here and search through these guys here and find a bunch of hanger screws and washers more time but hopefully today we'll make some progress and get this pretty finished up. The only way that's going to happen is I get to work.
just gathering a couple things here for final attachments. We'll use those in a second. Man, it is smoking hot out here. And you know it's hot when you got to put a white towel over top of your shrink tube. If not, I started noticing all the ends were kind of curled inward. Yeah, we'll ruin a whole box of shrink tube. That's stuff with fortune too. It takes a long time to collect a bunch where you can use it like I've been using it in this boat. I mean, I did the battery cables for about seven feet. <laughs> so, I mean, that's one inch shrink tube, seven feet. And I understand that, you know, if you're a business or something, you probably got hundreds of rolls of the stuff, but you know. We've gone ahead, got all our hangers all the way down here. We haven't done the final, final install yet. Um, one of the issues is, is I'm not sure which terminal the starter needs to have the solenoid wire attached to. And the only way to test it is to stick a battery in here and tap the two terminals to figure out which one's which. And if I do that, I'm going to knock it out of number one firing position, in which case then I'd have to get it back around the number one firing position before I do that. So I will be leaving the one solenoid wire off here, but before we put the manifolds on, I'll make sure that that's actually tested and put in. Um, cooling system, or the flushing system here, all installed, done. And for that matter, all of the cooling system is installed all the way up to the thermostat housings exits, which dump into the manifolds. The manifolds don't exist yet, so there's nothing to dump into. But I do have the hose for it and the clamps. The rest of it is done. I mean like done 95%. I just haven't hooked anything up yet. Meaning I still gotta hook this up, gotta hook up my sender over here, gotta hook up the alternator, gotta hook up what's left of the starter down here. And I'm gonna do that in a few minutes. But like I said, it's just smoking hot out here. And I also need to like dump all this stuff. I don't need any of these ends or shrink tube or any of this stuff anymore, hangers all that kind of stuff it's just in the way and as I said right now it's just getting damaged as I speak so I'm going to clean this mess up and then hopefully it'll be a few more minutes because it's already five o'clock and it's still 100 degrees out here so it's uh I'm hoping it cools off just a little bit that way we can uh have at least a little pleasure while we're doing this because I enjoy this stuff this is the fun stuff building is nice I mean Grinding out here at 100 degrees last summer and uh, fiberglassing and then grinding and then fiberglassing and then grinding and yeah that wasn't as fun as it could have been that's for sure. Uh, this kind of stuff this is fun for me but 100 degrees with a uh, blazing sun coming down on me. Hello you Mr. Sun. Yeah it's uh it's not as fun as it could be. two days of pedaling around we're all done comes in here catches our oil uh, pressure sender comes up here now of course what's missing just plugs in all the ends are on it into the temp sender down in here to the alternator all the way around we got our battery cables put up this way and back around they split off here one goes to the starter as I said, I got to figure out which wire is which, and then it picks up the ground cable and runs it all the way back over to the ground over here. And I know I could have just put the ground on like a nut down here, but at the same time, 
this other line had to come over to feed the starter so and get power from the starter because one of them is the dashboard wire and the other one's the actually I think it's the MSD box wire so yeah they both get fed right straight from the batteries off the starter battery terminal I guess it wouldn't be that hard to take apart honestly you just pull that ground bolt pull your starter stuff off and then you'd have to unplug your senders pretty much and you know you're done <laughs> I mean just everything just kind of you can push it right up against the transom if you had to not that I'm wishing anything on this thing I hopefully this thing will last a hundred years and uh, you don't have to worry about stuff like that but there's been many a times I've been taking motors out and I thought to myself man I wish somebody would have just left a half inch extra on that wire or another quarter inch here or whatever 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 because I had I did I, I left it so at some point I know I have this kind of um, fuel pump system going right now but as I said a few months ago if this thing gives me a fit I'm wiring in right here an electric fuel pump so that's where the room is for because if you get rid of this mechanical fuel pump the room right here is perfectly for it and then it could feed right off the battery terminal off the starter like everything else and the wire up to the sender or the pressure regulator switch or whatever it is that allows it at five pounds before it'll turn the the, the fuel pump on uh, goes right there and then it'll route right back and the ground goes with it so I mean, it wouldn't be that hard and it was in the back of my mind and if that's the case then my sender is going to have to move probably over here and we'll put a two-way in there so I left enough wire on it also in case it needs to actually turn around it can turn around and still have plenty of slack on it there isn't going to be anything, anything pulling on it and uh, you know as I said I left extra on the starter in case it's something goes crazy wrong and you change something around you could undo that whole side you probably get another extra foot of wire if you needed it it's just all thoughts later on in life I mean 50 60 years from now somebody will be looking at it going it's a shame because we're putting in this nuclear powered you know blah 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 6,000 horsepower that's what we got today oh yeah actually uh, I cut the nubs off of my screws as I said no sharp edges anywhere they're stainless steel screws I used the wheel on a piece of aluminum I'm hoping there's no rust that comes from it but that's all been painted up everything's ready to go ready to go ready to go so we're officially done with electric and tomorrow we'll move on to something else and we'll see you then huh, that's weird everybody comes out at two o'clock in the afternoon to mow the lawn hottest part of the day Oh well. You're pretty bold. Let's shoot that part again. It's just more convenient, I guess, because of the water drain or the water, whatever that thing is. And you can almost oval it out. It's the same diagram. You're picky. You're a picky squirrel. <clears throat> Do you see that? That was amazing. <laughs> it's a wire cord uh, for boat. Um, it's a wire cord. So but the hell is it? I don't know what it looks like. Uh, Sparker maker <laughs> coil. But the only way we're gonna get that.